My voice is top choice. <coughs> me, 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 me. Hey, Power Director peeps. How y'all doing out there? My name is Malik, and I'm back on your screen with more Power Director love from Power Director University. Today I'm gonna to show you how to use the voiceover function in Power Director, and I'm gonna show you using Power Director 14 Ultimate. So let's jump off into the software and make it happen. Okay, Power Director peeps, here we are in Cyberlink Power Director 14 Ultimate, and it's time for you to bask in the glory that is a voiceover tutorial. But before you get to basking, let me go ahead and remind you of a few quick things. Remember to like, comment, and share this video. When you do that, it lets people know that the content in this video is good, and it lets them know that they need to watch it too so they can learn how to use PowerDirector. Always remember to subscribe to the channel. If you don't subscribe to Power Director University, then you won't know when I upload new content and you'll be missing out when I upload new tutorials for Power Director. That means you won't be able to learn the software like you should, man. Okay? Let's make this voiceover tutorial. All right, as you can see, I have some content down in the timeline. I got some media there. It's actually the intro from my videos. All right, so that has some sound in it. We've got some audio going on there, things like that. Nice little picture. Always remember that you have to have a video or pictures or something in the timeline in order for the record button to become active when you go into the voiceover room. Speaking of going into the voiceover room, let's do that now. So you have your voiceover recording room. We're gonna go ahead and click on that. And when we get into this room, there's a lot of different things going on here. So the first thing that you have is you have your input level. What you wanna make sure is that when you start speaking into your microphone that the input level is at a correct level so that your voice does not clip. If you hit the red, that means your voice is gonna clip. There's gonna be sounds and noise and things that are going on in your recording that are gonna make it sound real crappy, okay? If you wanna have crappy audio, go ahead and let it clip. If not, make sure that you're staying out of the red so your voice is not clipping. Now, you also have your fade out and fade in button. So this will make your voice fade in when you start talking and it will make your voice fade out when you get to the end of the recording. You also have your device button. So this is how you select an audio device that you're going to be recording from or a device that you would input like a musical instrument or something like that. So if I click on device, we get a new screen here. So. The audio device is the device that we're going to be recording our voice from. So if I click on this drop down, you'll see that there are several options that I have here. And I'm going to choose the microphone Shure Digital. So I'm going to click on that. And now what you also have is your input volume, which you could adjust from here. The audio input would be if you have a different device plugged in, instrument or something like that, keyboard, something that you want to record from. And then you have your mixer button. Clicking on the mixer button will open up your computer audio mixer so you can see all the different devices that are available for you. So let's say if you went to this drop down and the device wasn't listed there for some reason, then you could click on the mixer button. and it'll bring up all of the devices that should be available on your computer. And this way, if something wasn't available or it wasn't working, you could figure it out and you could possibly correct it from here 
or at least you know that you need to go somewhere on your computer to correct that issue. So now that I have the correct microphone selected, I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And now it changed to microphone. And now when I'm speaking, you can see that my input level is being captured. So you can tell that right now I'm in the green. I'm pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and leave my input where it's at right there because the green is very, very good for me. I like it like that. Now the next option we have is profile. So if I click on profile, We get to select the format and we get to select the attributes of the format. And we also can create a profile that we can go back to later on if we want to create our own from these options. Let's say I keep this as PCM. So we want to have a PCM WAV file. And then I want to go down to attributes. And on the attributes, you can select the sample rate, you can select the bit rate and whether it's going to be a uh, mono or stereo and then how many kilobytes per second. Uh, I like uh, 4800 kilohertz at 16 bit mono. So I'm going to select that one. You can select whatever works best for you. I wish they had 24 bit on here, but you know, it is what it is. If I wanted to, let's say, hey, I just want to pick it directly from here next time. I don't want to have to go down here and, and pick it. I can create a profile. So if I click on Save As, I can give it whatever name I want and then click OK. And now instead of going down there and looking for it, it'll be right here, either Untitled. Or I have Now I have Favorite. And if I want to remove it, now I can click on remove to remove any profile that I saved. So I'm going to click on OK because this is the format and these are the attributes that I want for my sound. So now you also have the preferences button. If you click on that, it's going to give you some options. Uh, you can create a time limit. So you don't want to go over a certain amount of minutes. Let's say I had a file that was, or a clip or a video that was a minute long, then I can go ahead and click on time limit and put one minute in there. And then that way I know that I'm not going to go over a minute regardless of what I do. That's how much time it's going to be recording. Um, if I want to have a three second delay before I start recording, maybe I clear my throat every time before I start talking or I just want to, you know, make sure that I'm ready before it starts recording that I can have a three second delay. So when I click on the record button, there'll be a three second delay and then it'll start recording. And then I can always have it uh, auto fade in at the beginning and auto fade out at the end. If I want to, I can select from those two options. Last option on here is mute all tracks when recording. So if I don't want to hear the sound or the audio from the video clips uh, that are on the timeline, I can click on this and then I won't hear those. They won't be distracting me while I'm doing my voiceover. If I'm wearing headphones or whatever, then you don't really need to click on that. Uh, if you're okay with listening to the audio of the timeline in your ears, it won't cause any interference with the microphone. But if you want to make sure that there's no interference with the mic and you don't have headphones on, then I would select mute all tracks when recording. That way you don't hear that sound and it's not any other things going on with your recording. So now that I have everything set up and I'm ready to go, I can go ahead and click on the record button. And when I do, I can start speaking and it will capture my voice. So let's give it a try. Okay, this is the best intro I have ever seen in my life. Isn't this that Power Director University intro? Oh my goodness, that is awesome. 
Okay, so I clicked on the record button again to stop it. And then it went ahead and created the audio file and it added it to the audio track. Now, another really cool thing about this is we created this and now it's in the timeline. So it will be a file that we can produce along with whatever other video clips or whatever. We'll have that voiceover going on over the pictures or the video. So it'll be really cool. But if you just wanted to use this uh, audio file later on, let's say you wanted to use it with something else. Well, the file is actually saved on your computer. If you right click on the audio and go to view properties, it will actually give you the file location and the name of the file. So you can go to that file and you can actually rename it, uh, save it at a different location or put it somewhere else if you want to use this file later on in some other video or somewhere else besides just using it as the voiceover for the current video that you're making. And that's it, Power Director peeps. You got your voiceover training for the day. Enjoy. All right, Power Director peeps, you know the routine, the thumb, the one that's pointing in the upward direction, Click it, like it, lift it, love it, hug it. It lets people know that the content in this video is good. Comment, if you leave them, I will come. Basically, go ahead and leave me a comment and I'll reply. If I can't help you, I'll point you in the right direction and get you some help so you can get things moving and get your editing back on point. And last but not least, subscribe. If you don't subscribe, you're gonna miss out on all of the power director goodness I bring to you. So if you want to know when I upload a video and you want to watch all the power director tutorials that I do, you got to subscribe. All right, people. So sub it up. Thanks a lot. We'll see you guys again soon.